we're going to do an illustration using gold and silver alcohol inks. Of course, we're going to use some other inks too, but the focus is on using gold and silver inks. And you guys might remember the video where I sort of played around with them and demonstrated with them. So we're going to get started. I have a gold mist sort of started here. I used the leftover scraps from the last time I played around with my uh, ink. And I really just want a fine mist. So I'm gonna put a few drops of the golden and then put a lot of the alcohol in. And this is 90 proof, 99% uh, actually, uh, rubbing alcohol and I have a dropper here. I wish I could find my big refill bottle because it is time to refill this. And uh, if you use alcohol inks in your studio and you don't keep rubbing alcohol handy, I don't know what's wrong with you, you are missing out because rubbing alcohol is super helpful. And um, I haven't tested this yet, so it might it might clog up on us. We'll find out. But better me making that mistake than you. Now, in an ideal world, I could put a little ball ba bearing in to shake it, help mix it. But, you know, as long as I leave some air in, I can mix it and we get this beautiful sort of golden color. So, one of the first things I want to do today move those things out of the way. I'm going to need to do a mask on this illustration. This is the illustration that I'm using for today. It's my character, Seven Inch Kara. Really, her name's just Kara, but the book's Seven Inch Kara. Um, I am drawing this tiny, adorable little girl with all this jewelry on her to make use of the silver and gold inks. And I want to do a background spray with the gold. I thought that would be really pretty. But I want to mask her off because I don't want these... Um, this is, So gold and silver inks are pigment based, right? And I don't want the pigments affecting her skin or how I'm rendering her. So I need to do a mask. And to do a mask, I am going to use something called frisket film. Super useful. Um, it does have its problems. It does leave sticky residue. Um, and if you guys know of a better masking frisket that doesn't leave a sticky residue, I would love to hear it because it's pretty frustrating. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna tape this down and I'm gonna trace it. And if you are looking for a tutorial on how to use Frisket, especially how to use Frisket for alcohol markers, there are other videos on my channel which cover that as a tutorial. Um, in fact, I think my first one started with my art snacks versus sketchbox challenge for I wanna say March. So please watch that and then get back to me. We're gonna get started with this. So I'm going to trace my image out, cut it out, um, remove the uh, Sharpie marker using this handy rubbing alcohol. See, it's already starting to pay off to have it in your studio. And then I'm gonna apply it. So I will check in with you guys after I've applied it. All right, guys, so I've got my masking frisket in place and you can see it cause it is shiny. And I've got my gold spray. So we're going to give this a test run. You got to shake it up really good. Of course, with these, you need to shake them up really good regardless. So always shake your metallics. And at this strength, you get just a faint shimmer. It's pretty. It's pretty. Um, but there isn't really much to it. I mean, it's just like a very light hint of gold. Doing another coat. I'm gonna let that dry, or really let that evaporate, um, and then probably do it a few more times. And I'm going to increase the amount of gold by adding some of this in. and then spraying, again, spraying it again after it has dried. And do be careful of the fumes. We are working with alcohol and rubbing alcohol. Um, 
So if you have a sensitive nose or if you're, you're prone to headaches or if smells make you sick, um, this may not be an activity for you. And if you really feel like it is an activity for you, it might be an outside activity. So I'm going to let this dry and come back. Okay, so the ink is finally evaporated. It does take a little bit longer with these metallic inks. And I want to show you something. I don't know if it'll come up, but if you brush your finger across, it will pick up some of the gold shimmer. Now I did, did say I wanted to do another layer. And at this saturation, it's much more noticeable. So now you can see why we did the mask. I mean, if you want just a hint of gold, then um, that first saturation is fine. But if you want lots of gold, this is how you do it. You put more in, duh. Um, and I really wasn't counting. <laughs> At first I was just using up um, leftover gold from a prior experiment. I didn't want to go to waste. Now, when you do spray it, it will push the particles so that is something to be aware of and be careful of. And that's why you wanna let it dry before you apply again. Um, that way, instead of pushing the particles and leaving this sort of harsh delineation, like we're getting right here, you're gonna get a nice dispersal, like we're getting further up. And it's a little hard to see, I know, cause it's basically just gold shimmer, but that is a way to use it. And it's actually very pretty in real life. So I'm gonna let this dry and get back to you guys. So that layer is dried. It's time for another. All right, I think that might be our last spray gold. So it's time also to start picking out colors. And what's interesting about when I swatch these things is I'll often find duplicate colors between different families. Like Ranger's Indigo is pretty much B79 or B69, but really closer to B79 from Copic. So um, when you're putting together your alcohol marker collection, you should definitely be aware of duplicates. Uh, I do have many of them just because I have such a large collection. And one of these days I will um, do a whole post about find, uh, what markers that I found, what inks that I found are duplicates. So you don't need both. Um, which ones are unique and worth investing in, etc. Um, even though it is a little bit of a waste of money on my part, I don't really consider it a waste of money because I think of it as um, basically making an investment to help you guys. Now, when you're doing gold and silver stuff, you're going to need colors underneath. So I am grabbing some yellows and some grays. And I'm going with cool grays. You can also go with blue grays if you have um, those sort of markers in your color family. I'm pretty sure Shin Han does blue grays. Because you're going to need color underneath. Otherwise, it's gonna just look really, really fake. It's gonna look like gilding rather than like, um, and it might look really, really fake right now anyway while I'm figuring out how to use these alcohol inks without um, without having access to markers because I am concerned about them clogging the markers. If you would like to make a generous donations, donation, singular or multiple I guess you could, I wouldn't say no, of a empty Copic sketch for the gold and an empty Copic sketch for the silver, please shoot me an email. I certainly would not say no. That would be a big help, especially the, now that they're getting increasingly hard to find. So in this illustration, I'm going to use beneath the gold, I'm going to use 063 from Blick. Well, uh, um, hmm. Yeah, okay. Y26 from Copic and 069 from Blick as well. And I'm going to use Cool Gray 3 and Cool Gray 6 from Copic underneath all areas where it is, um, where it, underneath the silver and the gold. So this has dried and this can come up. 
Ooh, look at that. That's so cool. That looks nice. I am pleased with it. There is a little bit of, um, it got away from me in a couple of places, but otherwise that looks really cool and I'm excited about using alcohol-based shimmer mist. And that was just me taking a photo of it for the blog so I can write about it. I do have many readers who are not watchers. So I try to make sure I have something for both of you guys. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the Copic skin tones I know I'm going to need. I always use so many skin tones. You really don't need that many though. And some for hair. And I'm still kind of deciding on what I want to do for her clothing. But I think I will fill in what I know and then work around that. And I have a Copic sketch. It's the Colorless Blender. And I'm just going to try and pick up some of the stray gold just to clean it up a little bit. That really does look cool. I need to get the silver in a mister soon too. But that means I need to reorder my... Um, my alcohol because I'm running low. So I'm going to go ahead and actually do the silver and the gold first. Of course, areas where it doesn't quite meet up, like on her sleeve, that is noticeable. But I mean, what are you going to do about it? So I am doing the gold first, at least the base layers for the gold first because I feel like this is going to help me determine what I'm doing with the rest of the colors. Believe it or not, I don't always go in with a color scheme in mind. I probably should, but I do so many of these field tests for you guys and demonstrations that uh, it's difficult to keep up sometimes. Sometimes I just know the general feeling I want. And I do believe Ranger makes a copper and quite possibly a bronze. I my Michaels doesn't um, doesn't really keep up with it, so uh, I have to do a lot of that ordering online. And honestly, I can't I can't afford to look at it too often because I will spend money, and I can't afford to do that all the time. And since I'm going to be covering a lot of this with a gold shimmer mist anyway, or a silver shimmer anyway, I'm doing kind of basic gold and silver rendering. What I would normally recommend is look up what you want to render online and then use that as, you know, strong reference. much gold it's picked up just from like gently crossing the paper. I'm gonna look gilded by the time we're done.
All right, so we've got the skin knocked out. Now it's time to start coloring everything else. And I was thinking sort of like colors of royalty, so I'm going with this indigo, which really feels more like a royal blue. And I didn't want to go straight to the indigo. I wanted to go, I wanted like um, another step in between. But unfortunately, I couldn't find anything that was really a step right beneath it in terms of color from my Copics collection. So I'm just sort of gonna have to wing it, I guess. It will end up being a very dark blue dress. And I still haven't really decided yet on her sash or the sort of fringe tasseled apron that she's wearing. So, you know, might have to make it up as I go along as well. Oh shoot, well I guess that solves that. I started co coloring the sash. I guess I'll have to do something with it though, so that it doesn't just look like, like it's not there at all, honestly, is how it looks now. Like it just blends in with the rest of the dress. So I'm gonna have to do something kind of special with it. Add a pattern to it, which is difficult when it's this dark. So I'm gonna be relying on like my Signo and my Opaque White to add something to that. And I am coloring on Strathmore's smooth Bristol paper in my one of my many little visual journals. I think you guys see me use these a fair amount. So I thought the blue would go well with all the gold. Little bit of visual contrast there. Now it really looks like a lot of blue because of the sash and because I'm also, her underdress is also blue because it's a continuation of her blouse. <clears throat> I know I'm being kind of quiet, I'm sorry. It's only so much to say when we're doing color fills. This blue is also just the right shade that it really messes with my eyes. It's a beautiful color, but it makes it very difficult to see. And my eyesight is not great. Alright, now we're going to use B39, which is Prussian blue. Darken this up. And it is a cooler blue than indigo. And it might not actually solve my problem. I might have to slip into the land of the blue grays. Or even, like, the blue purples might be it. I think that's the case. Solution might be eggplant, which is another ranger color. All right, let's try eggplant now. Ugh, still no. Indigo is such a, um, such an interesting, such an intense and interesting uh, blue color. It's a little bit hard to find things that will work with it that'll darken it up. This is BV29, which is slate, and it's still not perfect. Um, it is, it's a little too dark to be considered fluorescent for sure, but it's the same sort of problems that you can have with color matching fluorescence. Just like nothing goes with it. which is why I didn't want to immediately jump to it. I wanted to work up to it. But that's gonna be the best that's gonna get. And y'all should know, I don't actually do gem colors a whole lot. So, it'll be a little bit of practice for me. And I think I goofed it up anyway, so. Try it like this. Oh yeah, look how much gold you pick up if you don't mask that area off. I'm gonna scrub that off. So if you are going to use the gold or the silver in a spray, do keep in mind that you need to do some masking. And I know there's also stamp masking um, 
paper. I have some. It's not big enough, really, though, for the size illustrations I do. And that's honestly not very big. So um, I have not actually had a good opportunity to use it yet. And I think, I mean, really all this blue makes it hard to do, um, find something that works for the apron. Gonna try to tone it down a little bit. And usually I would save that towards the end but it's kind of affecting the colors I'm picking now. So I want to go ahead and implement whatever I'm going to do, which is apparently like poor man Sachiko stitching, and then decide on her apron. White would work, but I really don't want to do white. Maybe kind of a creamy peach would be good. Oh, nope, too fluorescent. Might live to regret this. At least the peach goes well with the gold, but you gotta clean off your nib as soon as it picks any up. So really, other than masking things, peach, I mean, uh, gold needs to be applied. Gold and silver need to be applied last because the pigments in them do interfere with the dyes in your alcohol markers. Well, I keep picking up like bits of the indigo and uh, oh shoot, that does affect this sort of a very light peach color. Pretty, yeah, see any smearing, it's going to show up immediately. Fortunately, I have a darker color to sort of help me clean that up. I really want to see if I can go lighter than this, even. Like, ah, uh, it's like barely even there. Non-existent. This is pale chiffon. Oh my gosh. And if as soon as it hits a patch of the indigo, it's like, hey, indigo's here. So be careful. Oh, gross. I hate when that happens. It turns an illustration that was working out really well into one that you have all these areas you need to hide and it makes it look grungy. So that's one of the reasons why I'm warning you guys off. I should have done the lighter color first and then the darker color. That's one of the problems with determining your color scheme though as you're working. That and I mean you end up with color schemes that just don't work like this doesn't really work. I mean, technically orange and blue are contrasting colors, so they should work okay together. But it's not like a good... It does, This color scheme does not con convey anything for the image. And I keep hitting patches or bits of schmutz, which, since this color is so light, you can't... You can't just cover that up. It, it really shows. So I cleaned off my hands and hopefully that will uh, greatly reduce the smudging. And I'm going in for another layer with this super light pale chiffon color. And I also think I have an idea with for a design that I'm gonna put on this. I really should have gone into it <laughs> with a design in mind. Um, learn from my mistakes, kids. And honestly, this marker might be going a little dry too. So that could be a contributing factor to why I am having so much smudging and difficulty and why it's looking kind of dirty. Cause that's um, definitely um, an element of when your marker is going dry. Oh, oh man, look at all that blue I picked up. Is it will, it'll stick and it won't put out an even amount of ink. And I mean, there's just enough issues Pretty sure this is going dry. Fortunately, I keep a spare, 
So I'm gonna go ahead and refill that and then get back to you guys. Okay, so onward. Yeah, it's a lot better. Oh my gosh, I don't know why I was fighting with that. Still picking up blue, but that's not the marker's fault. I mean, that blue just wants to go everywhere, doesn't it? I'm gonna switch over to... Hmm... Shoot! There we go. I need to clean up anyway. Uh, tea Rose again. Is it Tea Rose? No, it's Peach Puff. Hopefully, we are nearing sort of the end of this apron. I do have a print planned for it, so not quite the end, but at least the end of all this pink. In case you guys are wondering, I am actually referencing a rose pattern and just kind of quickly sketching it in. And I mean, this really, this is not an ex exact science. You really don't need to be super proficient to do this. I really encourage you guys to give it a try. Um, it's fun. It's not hard to do. And <laughs> you end up feeling like a fabric designer in a in a really cool way after like yeah that, that one was mine I mean it, it doesn't even have to be a good pattern you know like just giving it a shot adding some of your own uh taste if especially if it's like to a stamp pattern right like imagine how cute a little hand-drawn clothing pattern is gonna look on a stamp and how much more personal that's gonna be I mean this is my own illustration but I know a lot of you who watch this are are stampers or your your um, like craft journalist kind of people so I really really want to encourage you to give this a shot it's not hard at all it's low risk I mean if it, if it screws up then you've lost like 30 minutes of your time. If I screw up, I've lost like an hour of my time. But those, that, by making those mistakes, you're gonna learn how to fix it the next time and how to get something you want the next time, which is really valuable to have. So I really, I really do recommend you give it a shot. I mean, you guys can see I'm really being fast and loose with this. It's really not a big deal. I just wanted to add a sort of a whimsical pattern to her apron. And I need a green for the leaves. And just think about how much further, those of you who do use stamps, how much further your designs will go if you can add in little embellishments like this, you know? You can really change the feeling just by changing the patterns you're drawing. So, you know, just something worth, worth thinking about, I think. But I've warned you guys that I'm an art pusher and I will always push you to at least give it a shot. I would be pretty remiss if I didn't, I feel like. And we can just put green and pink over anywhere that got screwed up and kind of hide it. Okay, so we've got everything but two little pieces colored. Maybe not the way I would have wanted them to be colored, but they're colored. So go ahead and finish this up. All right, 
right, so that's where we are right now. I need to clean off my desk, make plenty of room, and we will sort of switch gears. So for this segment of the evening, you are going to need some rubbing alcohol, an eyedropper, some synthetic brushes, All right, your metallic inks. And um, if you happen to have anything that can serve as like little disposable palettes, like bottle caps, that tends to be pretty helpful. I did have some and I can't find them. So we will probably have to progress without it. I'm gonna really have to start hoarding them. And I also have my colorless blender on hand. And you don't have to use rubbing alcohol. If you're running low on rubbing alcohol, you can use the alcohol blending solution that comes, well, that you can purchase for your Ranger products. Or, and I know I have it somewhere, and I've, oh, it's that kind of day today. You can also use the colorless blender for Copic, like the colorless blending solution. I don't happen to know where mine is offhand. Since I'm running kind of low on rubbing alcohol, I'm going to switch over to the blending solution. And I need to find something that will work as palettes. And the alcohol blending solution is kind of expensive for what it is. So um, if you really don't want to use that and you really just want to use the rubbing alcohol, I totally understand that. It will also evaporate. So you do want to keep an eye on it. Dang it, this is driving me nuts. I'll be right back. Found one for the gold, so at least I can get started with that. So I allowed the gold to evaporate in a bottle cap and I'm re trying to reconstitute it. Yes, and it's working. Reconstituting it with a little bit of the Ranger uh, blending solution. I'm gonna go over my bells. Have any of you guys tried putting your um, your metallic alcohol markers in a Copic, um, shoot, empty Copic marker or empty Copic wide or empty Copic original, whatever. Have any of you guys tried that and had any sort of results? I am really curious to hear about that. All right, so on the bells, let me zoom in. I applied it and it pretty much made all of the color that I had previously applied null and void. So I do think applying that base coat is important, but I am being a little more strategic. pressure scared me being a little bit more strategic as to where I'm applying that and I'm gonna have to achieve or I guess I could just use my my the mat that I have it is meant to be used with alcohol markers it is a non-stick craft mat it's one of those ink essentials I'm picking up a little bit of the gold just to sort of allow what's underneath to shine through. And I'm totally prepared to have to put another layer on top of it, sort of give it some, some, you know, <laughs> make it a little more realistic. All right, so that's what the gold looks like. It is more really of a shimmer than it is like a real gold or a, um, let me see if I can find it. So down here, where it's like high, high glare, high gloss. That is Winsor & Newton's um, gold paint and it's water-based or there is, I mean, it's meant to be used with water. All right, so I'm going to apply one drop to my craft mat, maybe two and paint from that because that's what these non-stick mats are for. And I highly recommend you give them a shot dip my synthetic in my blending solution and pick up some of my silver. And the silver is by Pinata. They also make these sort of inks. Ooh, wow, that's like 
High gloss silver there. High ho silver. And that's blended out with blending solution. And I'm, I am using Ranger's blending solution. I think with these, instead of picking up the color, I am going to apply some of the alcohol marker on top of it and we'll see how that works. It's what the, some of these videos are all about, right? You know, playing around, figuring stuff out. What's nice about the paintbrush is it allows me to do a controlled application, much like if I were painting, and I can also control how much shine I get based on how much extender I mix in. And I think there's also a pearl, although I don't own it. Now let's try adding details back in with alcohol marker, knowing that it will reactivate the gold. So we do have to be kind of careful. And Blix Antique is a really good dark gold color. It's working really nicely. It's hard to tell, but I like it. And some areas seem to be working better than others. And we'll go back in to the silver. And this is a dark gray, a cool gray, sorry. Oh, it really wants to pick up that, that pigment. It's a little bit like how I would imagine coloring an ice cube would be. I feel like I'm skating all over it. It's not really having much of an effect, so I'm gonna have to go dark. I'm gonna have to, first of all, I'm gonna have to clean off the tip. See all that? Shouldn't do it on, shouldn't do it on your skin. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. I am a bad example. Even the much darker uh, C10 isn't really having the effect that I'd hoped for. I bet if I switch to watercolor though, because this is alcohol based and the water is not gonna reactivate it, whereas it is reactivating it here, I bet it wouldn't be as much of a problem. But, you know. Anyway, metallics are interesting to use. Um, they would be good for commissions if you are commissioned by crows or people who just enjoy shiny. I personally enjoy shiny. It is not necessarily good if you need to be able to reproduce or scan. So um, in terms of like illustrations for a book, it's not, it, it just wouldn't give you a professional result because it's not gonna read as gold or silver. It's just, it's not. Um, just like glitter is never that impressive when you take a photo of it, but in real life, it's like, oh, look at that. And the fact that these, you, to my knowledge, you can't use them in a marker. Although, like I said, if any of you guys are interested in helping me debunk that, I am totally willing to take your, uh, your donations. There's a little part where I couldn't do it because the I didn't cut the masking fluid so or the masking frisket there we go uh, not even thinking today so I'm gonna hit that with that that's good for touch-ups all right so what about cleanup well ooh, something I really don't like about the Tim Holtz uh, alcohol bl blending solution is it's sticky. It's really sticky compared to uh, rubbing alcohol or compared to colorless blender. Like I think they put glycerin in it. I'm gonna pour that in there. That way it doesn't go to waste. And I'm gonna start cleaning up. And then when after I clean up, I'm gonna go over this with the white sign now. So cleanup for this should be pretty dang easy, other than the stickiness. Uh, 
alcohol base, so you spray it with rubbing alcohol. Should work. Ugh, gross. And I really need some more rubbing alcohol. Craft mat makes it so easy, doesn't it? Oh, there's like gold all over here. So let's clean that up. All right. So to finish this up, I need a white signal, which is somewhere on this desk. Hiding from me. There it is. Hiding in plain sight, more like. And since Signo is not alcohol based, this is not even a problem for it. It goes right over it. So, not my favorite illustration of the day, but it was still pretty fun. It was fun to play around with alcohol inks. My favorite part was the really pretty shimmer mist I was able to make. Um, and this is super simple. It's just a few drops or a squirt of your gold or your silver after it's been shaken, of course, in a spritzer bottle with uh, rubbing alcohol or alcohol blending solution, which um, I personally don't care for because it is sticky as heck. So, um, you know, not a super big fan, but rubbing alcohol I like for this kind of stuff. And you're going to have to shake it every time you use it. And it really helps to mask it off um, because the pigments in these inks can clog up your alcohol marker. So that's something to keep in mind. And you can use synthetics with your... Um, with your alcohol inks, you can use synthetic brushes. These are just Princeton Art and Brush Company synthetics, white tackle on. I got them in my sketch box this month, I do believe. Um, and they're not really good enough quality for me to watercolor with them, but they are great for this particular use because I'm not going to ruin they're, <laughs> they're already ruined. I'm not going to ruin them anymore, right? Um, so you can sort of see a little bit of shimmer, but it's not as impressive. Um, you know, and for for stampers, I can see these being beautiful because you can do like gold stamps, that kind of thing. I can see them being beautiful and useful. For artists, um, except with the exception of commissions where someone is receiving it in person so they can see the effect, um, it's just not, it doesn't photograph well. It doesn't, it doesn't read as gold or silver as much as some other ones because the particles are so small. So, um, you know, I'm happy I bought them. I'm happy to test them for you guys, but they are not going to become an integral part of my work, as disappointing as that might be, um, unless I can think of something for them. So, uh, I'm Becca Hilburn with Natto Soup Studio. I hope you guys found that helpful. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please take a moment to hit like. That always helps. Consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. I do a lot of alcohol marker stuff, from sprays to the inks themselves, to putting them in palettes, to filling markers with all sorts of colors. Um, I also do watercolor tutorials and I do demonstrations, reviews, unboxings for pretty much any art supplies that fall under watercolor, graphic arts, comics, and markers. So if you're interested in that, this is a good channel to watch. Um, I try to update twice a week. My schedule technically says I update once a week on Saturday, so there will always be something at least once a week, but I do try to do twice. Um, and I am super passionate about egalitarian um, art education. So that is that is my big focus, but I am also a comic artist. Um, so you hitting like and you subscribing would really help me out. Another thing that would really help me out is you sharing this to your social networks with your friends because you'd help me expand my audience and I would super appreciate that. That would be a big help for me. So if you can take a moment, use the social links, and do that. Um, the last way you can help is you can help financially by supporting what I do through Patreon. And you can find information on that at patreon.com slash soup. So I'm Becca Hilburn. Like I said, I will see you guys again soon. Have a good day. Bye.